Hi everybody, welcome back. These are the first three spreads I've done in this book. And while I'm not using the book, and especially if I keep it closed, I do a dusting of baking powder all over it, especially in the inside crease there. And that way when the book is closed, because we've used acrylic matte medium, it can cling and stick the pages to each other. So it's a good idea to always dust them with baking baby powder. You can always wipe it back if you want to look at it and brighten it up again. It's just a good way to keep the pages from sticking together and ruining your lovely artwork. And what I'm going to do now is put some tape on the previous spread on the upper left page. And I'm not going to press too hard because I don't want it to take away the paint later when I take it off. But I'm just trying to do a protective layer on the back here with that plastic sheet and the extra tape because the sheet didn't quite fit. And that way I can cover, cover it all the way around so that when I paint, put matte medium and things down, I protect that back page. And I'll do the same with the, fo the forward page. I will put some tape at the top just because my plastic sheet doesn't cover all of it. And I'm also going to for sure protect the middle seam with it. And I'm only going to press hard right at the inner crease there. I don't need to worry about the rest. And that's so that water and um, liquid paint don't bleed through. So now I've got everything covered all the way around on both sides of the spread. And I've got some tissue prints here that I've done previously. Watch for my down below for links for printing tissue. But a lot of times you'll notice I, I do either black or white prints on tissue. And that way when I put the whites down over my artwork, I can always glaze them and color them afterwards. So that's my reason. These are Stampers Anonymous stamps that I've got. And this one particular set you can pause and look in and find find the set. I'll put it in my notes as well. What I want to do, normally what I do with all, all of my backgrounds is I do mark making with crayons or some black ink, whatever, and I make a background layer just with marks just to get into my zone and give it a busy background with texture and detail. This time I'm using stamps and I did use a pad, sorry for my head there, I did use a pad with permanent black ink and that way later on when I add paint and gel medium over it, I won't smear it. So as I put this down, it's definitely permanent. It will not smear and smudge when I add wet water and uh, ink over it or um, paint over it later. So what I'm doing is just randomly taking, I like that stamp because it's got so many different sections on it and I'm just sort of, I don't want to do a uh, press it down so that you see the square of the stamp. I was just trying to get sections of it and use my palm and parts of my fingers to press down part of it. I don't want real ridges. And then I'm, I've just got about three or four stamps here that are all complementary. They're all adding, what I'm trying to do is a background layer, if you will, my underpainting. Instead of scribbles, it's going to be all this print and pattern but from a variety of stamps. Use whatever you have, of course. These are the ones that I have, and I quite like them because it's just a bunch of gibberish, a bunch of smudges, things like that. So I'm always trying to do something different. I mean, you could have used uh, charcoal, done some marks and sprayed it and let it bleed, uh, as I've done in some other videos, but this is what I'm doing today is using stamps to give a very busy background all over pattern. I really like making textures and pattern and and also uh, mark making, but this time I'm having fun with something different. And what I'm doing with that one that looks like pretty much just smudging, I'm sort of moving that around to give a bit of a flow in a pattern, flow in the pattern. So it, it kind of moves around the spread in a smudgy way. Make sure your ink is dry. Like I said, I did use a permanent ink pad. Some of the ink pads are not. So if you use them and then you add water, boy, they will bleed and smear. So just test it on a paper before you get this far. And now I'm going to do a light coating all over the entire two page spread with matte medium. And this is a way of coating and protecting that background. Again, if this wouldn't have been a permanent ink pad, this would have been smearing as I spread this and it would have made a gray mess. So just make sure that you're dealing with bone dry 
uh, stamps underneath before you apply this matte medium. And again, I'm just coating the page. It's protecting the background and it is also giving just a good stiff coating on the page to make it uh, more like a canvas so that when I do add paints, it uh, doesn't damage the paper underneath. It keeps it floating over top. I quite like this. It's a completely different way of doing things. I do this occasionally. I haven't done it a lot. But I'm trying to show you options. And again, I am an abstract artist, so if you've got stamps that have flowers and scenes and pretty much definite images, by all means, use whatever you've got. I'm just showing you technique. But again, I'm an abstract artist, so I don't... I like to do intuitive paintings. I don't like anything to be too obvious. I'm thinking about um, using blue. I'm going to give a spray a mist of water over the page. That was that matte medium was dry by the way. And now I'm going to get out my transparent blue. This is high flow this is a golden liquid high flow acrylic. It will be down below in the notes. All the colors I use are down there. And I'm using a soft bristled, long bristled brush that really helps fan it around the page. It's one of my favorite brushes. And I'm always mindful of dabbing the crease of the book with the edges of the straight edges of paper towel so that I can stop it from getting soggy in the middle seam there. So you'll see me doing that often. And it's because I've watered down the paint if I take it like I'm now right out of the jar, it's not quite as fluid and I can get closer to the edge there. So I'm just spreading this around. I'm not overthinking. Uh, and even though I dab that away and you see that there's white there, it will eventually make its way to that crease just because of the fold of the page. So I'm trying to make more patterns. So I had pattern from the stamps, and now I'm getting pattern from the paper towel with the color of blue paint. Yeah, I, you know, if you've seen my videos, you know I do like to make layers, and it's layers and layers of patterns and textures to give interest to the background. And this works most effectively if you've got uh, not a very watered down paint. If you, if you use it more solid like I've got there, right out of the bottle, and then press the paper towel, it makes more of a contrast and an obvious print. So again, as I've said in many of my videos, you might wonder why I put so much paint down if I'm just dabbing it away, but I'm not dabbing all of it away. Again, I'm leaving pattern, and then when I do it again, I, I do the same technique, but when I reveal pattern, it's maybe overlapping in a different way. So every time I put paint down and, and, and remove some of it with paper towel, I'm basically leaving some of it in crevices. So it adds an overall overlapping pattern in the background, which you can't achieve by painting it. You've got to do layers, layers and layers. Now I've got a tube of the same blue, but pre-mixed with um, um, a high flow acrylic white, and that makes it semi-opaque. And I'm just doing that to cover some of that busy background and, and add some interest and some layers. When you do all these layers and all these different techniques, it helps give movement all across your spread, and that's what I like to do. I'm always exploring and playing around with things like this, and again, if you don't do it like this, it's really hard to paint that effect. I'm giving it a good blow dry. I've sped that up so you don't get bored. And now I'm spraying a uh, fine mist of water in the bottom because I'm going to add my quinacridone Nicolazzo gold paint on the bottom. And fresh out of the tube, it's darker, but when it hits all that water, you can see how lemony it goes. I love this color. You've heard me say it before, but it's one of my favorite colors because it's so intense. And you can get three shades of color out of this depending on, on how it hits the water and how thick it is. It can go from lemon to that beautiful yellow to the gold and to almost a red, all right out of the one bottle. 
So what I'll do eventually is layer upon layer of this so that I get different shades of all that color. See if it's stretched straight out of the bottle. It's a really beautiful, deep, strong color. It's still a quinacrinone Nicolazzo gold, but it's getting towards red and I love that. I'm again taking up some of that liquid from the middle seam so it doesn't bleed through. Although I did add a fair bit of matte medium when I painted that on the page and that helps to protect that inner fold. So again, I'm trying to get some pattern, which means also unfortunately that I'm lifting some of that precious paint right back. But again, you don't get the pattern if you don't do that. And I'll do it several times so that patterns overlap again and we get interest. I like these pages, even though it is just my art journal, I love to turn the page and look and when it's got different layers and depth and things like that, all the more reason for me to get lost in the moment and start daydreaming. And every time I look at this, it could be a different daydream because it just depends on my mood. So I am trying to give interesting textures and backgrounds just to get lost. To take a journey. It's so much fun. This just gives me so much uh, joy. It's therapeutic. I've been going through a lot of um, sciatic pain, so it's really nice that I've got this hobby that gets me distracted from that. And it puts me back into a good frame of mind. So I'm going to add a little bit more straight out of the bottle. And because it isn't as wet, I can get closer to that inside seam because it's not really going to be so wet to bleed through. This is going to look like a bit of a mess to you, but again, it's, it's layer upon layer and eventually we get there. I sprayed water to distribute it um, because I don't like finger stroke uh, marks and paint strokes. Um, so it did spray water to spread it around, but that also made more water go into that inner crease. So that's why I kept dabbing that. And here, let's just keep adding. Oh, I thought I'd splatter that, but it came out very heavy. And that's okay. That's an interesting shape that it made. And I'll probably keep it there. Why not? I don't like to worry about little things that happen because they all end up being for the, for the best in the long run. And again, I do all of this intuitively. I go with the flow. I go with the things that happen, which I never know. There I'm doing it again, and it unfortunately came out quite heavy. So I'm kind of having to help it along by smudging it with the paintbrush. That's not what I wanted, but that's okay. There's matte medium on there below, so every time I spray water, and disperse this paint, I'm able to do that because the matte medium stops the paint from going right into the paper, which means I can lift it off. I could also, if this was on a regular canvas doing a similar technique, I could have used sandpaper to wipe it off, to, to um, scrape some of it off. But because I'm using paper, um, water helps to remove and to spread around. And then I'm using my favorite paintbrush, my fingers, to sort of smudge it. I love smudging and making things not so defined. It's a good transition between colors. Still looks like a mess, but that's okay. Again, I never know when I sat down to do this video and this spread, I had no idea where I was going with it. I just knew I wanted to do those stamps in the background and use these colors. The rest is just happening as it happens. And that's what I love about this technique. Oh, love that. It's almost red. I just love that. Look how brilliant and fun that is. I like using those colors and having the intensity of intensity of the colors shift and change throughout the spread. Let's do some more on the right. That is so beautiful. You could do these techniques that I show you with a heavier paste paint and do very similar, but 
I just love these high flow acrylics. I love glazing. And if you see me using heavier paint, it's usually white because I could put that down and it's dense and I can cover over things. But then because it's white, I can always go over that white later and glaze it with colors. So you'll often see me just using high flow acrylics and a heavy paste white or a mix like this with the high flow acrylic mixed with a white, with a, a thicker white. And that's just my technique. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking the pink with a soft brush and I'm glazing it. That background layer is dry, by the way. And I just thought it'd be nice to introduce some pink on the spread. And what I want to show you is when you use it as a glaze, it, 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 where it goes over the white, you see the pink. And where it goes over the yellow, it goes almost peachy. And then when it hits the blue, it goes almost lilac-y. So I love... I love using this pink and I love how it changes depending on the color underneath it. Again, this is just a glaze, so it will reveal bits of the color below and meld and become a third color. So I'm really happy with how that, it, it, it just, it adds pink all around the spread, but it morphs into different shades of it and it adds movement and continuity all through the page, all through the spread. I'm really happy with this. It was the perfect color to bring into my spread. I love glazing, love it. And I'm giving it a good dry. So now I'm bringing back these tissue prints and I'm trying to decide. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that when I use these white printed tissues over top of a spread, the background colors on the spread have to be very bold or it's not enough to show up once I put the tissue down. So that's why I start bold with the colors below and then we see where it goes. I'm quite liking this honeycomb pattern in the black and it's a distressed print. It's not a bold honeycomb, it's quite, quite distressed and I like that about it. And then this other one, look at that, it's just so subtle, the amount of paint that picked up on the tissue that it's just, a really busy but subtle bubbly kind of pattern which I would never be able to paint that the only way you can get that texture now is to, to just glue that down and when I glue these tissues down you know that the white of the tissue paper look how it goes transparent as soon as water hits it and the same thing when I add the matte medium to it that makes it transparent as well and the only thing that's going to show up on the page then um, is the print However subtle and distressed it is, the print that's on that page is what shows up. And again, I'm using uh, white, just plain water with a brush to um, find an outline of where I want to tear away that tissue because I don't want cut lines on the tissue. I want it to be very organic and very fuzzy and feathery on the edges so that when I see how transparent that tissue goes, that's what I love about this. So anyway, when I do this organically like this, instead of a straight scissor cut, it allows the edges of that tissue paper to disappear into the background colors later on after I glue it down. I'm really liking this honeycomb pattern. So again, I'm using my wet, my paintbrush to tear away the parts of the tissue print that I want to use in a very random way. I'm not overthinking it, I'm not over contriving it. It's very organic, very rough. It is what it is. And if I accidentally miss some of it, no big deal. But I like how rough or organic that, those edges are. They will just completely disappear once I glue this down. That's going to be fun. That's very complimentary to the black background from the stamps because the stamp background is very, um, very distressed as well. So even though one's a stamp and one's a print, they're complimentary. I never throw any of these scraps out. I keep them in my tissue printed, my printed tissue box, which I call my stash. And you never know when you're going to use these little bits. 
I mean, I don't need the whole part of a print. I only need part of it, like there. In fact, I don't like that straight edge along there, so I'm going to get rid of that as well. Look at that, the tissue's just disappearing. Now it's getting a bit delicate, and it's hard to keep that together because it's so wet, so you have to be careful. I'll set that one aside. And let's get these glued down. So bring up my matte medium again with a bigger brush, a soft brush, so that I don't have real brush strokes with it. And I'm gonna smudge that matte medium around Give it a good coat. You need quite a bit because that helps to dissolve, to wet and dissolve the tissue paper as well as glue it down. And the more you use, the more it uh, holds it down and disappears. It, it uh, makes the tissue disappear. So that white won't look so white once this is down. Look at that, there's the magic. And it will dry even a little more transparent once that matte medium dries. This is the fun. This is what I love about my process. You couldn't possibly paint that. It'd be really, really hard to paint what result I've got there. And I don't mind that some of that tissue pulled away. It reveals a darker patch of that yellow underneath, and I like that. I go with all, all the things that happen. I just go with it. Some of that tore away. I'm having trouble with that tissue. That's okay. Now try not to overwork it. The more times you pass that paintbrush over it, the more you push and smudge that tissue around and ruin your print. So you, you've got to kind of get the hang of that. Now I'm going to glue down that other section. I've got very sticky fingers at this point. I'm going to find where that is and tap it down with my fingers and then I put it down and I fan out with the brush. I work with the matte medium from, usually I start in the middle, I'm just dabbing that delicately and then I start from the middle working outward to hold it down. And again, that, that tissue paper is going to disappear. Won't be quite so obvious once I get it all down. And I use my finger to press, but again, you got it's delicate. Um, it's starting to lift some of the tissue paper with some of the print with it, but that's okay. I'll just tear that away. I don't mind. In fact, I kind of like that. I always end up liking the results of my little boo-boos. And I'm using my finger just to scrape away any of the white tissue paper that doesn't have the print on it because I just want the print to show up from that from that honeycomb pattern. And there's two little spots right there I'm going to scrape away as well. Right there. So I like that. Let's get that other little fragile bit pasted down. So this is a way of tying in the honeycomb with the right up to the smudges of black distress stamping up on the left. It just ties it all together. So as you notice, the stamps that I picked and the tissues that I picked to go with it, they're very complementary there. I'm not putting stripes on here. I'm kind of keeping random oval and honeycomb kinds of shapes throughout. And that seems to be working. I didn't want to put a flower print or anything like that. Again, I'm trying to keep this organic and see where it leads me. Look at that. There's no way I could have painted that. that just, that's just how I ended up. I love that pattern. That's really, really super fun. That's my favorite part of the whole spread right there. So because I put tissue print over top of that pink that I had underneath from the glazing, I want to reglaze some of those areas. Um, two things, one, I'm reglazing the pink. Number two, I'm covering up some of the white that's revealed from the tissue print. And it's tying it all together so that the tissue disappears and now you can just see the pink again. 
and you can still see the pattern from the tissue print. And again, I'm just going over some of the pink areas because I lost that from the tissue. This is so fun. I had no idea it was going to end up here, but this is where I am. You could even take a white Posca pen and fill in different shapes and areas and then later when it's dry, glaze over that. But I didn't want to bring out too many obvious shapes. I wanted them all to be very fuzzy and soft like this. Isn't that a riot? I just love that. That is just amazing. And it's just so much depth there. Some of the shapes come forward and some of them go into the background. Some of them are really cloudy. Really a lot of fun. So I'm going to do a little glazing. I'm still calling it glazing because I'm, I'm spreading it around and rubbing it down and spreading it around so that it, it becomes transparent and just a glaze. And I don't want to, I don't want the pattern below to disappear but I just wanted to provide some interest to the page and bring out some color over top of that white tissue paper that was there. And if I didn't like any of this, I could take a wet, wet wipe or a paper towel with rubbing alcohol and I could rub over that left page and, re and remove what I've just put there if I wanted to bring back the look of that pattern. But so far I'm liking it as it is. Or I could spray a lot of water and let it settle before it dries and remove some of it that way. But I'm happy with how this is going. I like that. Uh, I'm thinking that blue is a little strong up there, so I might soften it with the white, the lighter blue that was mixed with white. So it is a little more opaque. So I have to press hard with the brush and spread it around so that it doesn't stay too opaque. That way it acts more like a semi-opaque glaze. I don't want to completely cover up the background. And again, if you don't like the effect of that, you could use spray bottle and um, spray some of that paint off so that you reveal more of that background. But I quite like where this is going. And again, because I did matte medium over the whole spread before I did all of this, um, it is easier to lift off paint. If it would have been um, just all of that soaked into the paper, it would have been permanent. There's no way I could lift it then. And I'm trying to smudge around the paintbrush when I do all of that so that I don't have brush marks. So I'm playing around with this pattern. I'm kind of thinking, you know, this is reminding me of a bit of nature, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of thinking it'd be maybe neat to have a dragonfly stamp all over the place, but not too sure if I'm going to do that. Um, I did pull out a stencil that I've got, which is like a sun sunburst, and I'm going to use molding paste, and I'm going to give texture to reveal this pat this um, sunburst. I could actually take a container and put that molding paste in it and add white uh, paint to it to make it a color when I put it down, but I'm going to show you why I'm doing white instead. And I believe this molding paste is semi-transparent, so when it dries, it reveals a little bit of what was below. If it, You can get molding paste that's solid white as well, but I like this because it allows some of the layers to show, and then I can glaze over it. So I good, did a good coating, and then I get a larger paint spreader to firmly press across from left to right, and then I'll go up and down so that I'm spreading that evenly all over with one coat, and it also removes any excess molding paste because I don't want it too, too thick. And then you lift up. Look at that. So it will dry a little less white than that. And that's what I like about it. And before you put that away, 
put it on a paper towel and spray it with water and wipe all that paste off of it before it sticks and before it dries. And I'm taking the paint off the paint spread. The molding paste I wiped off the paint spreader as well. So now I'm just going to clean this stencil. Good habits. And then you can put it away nice and clean. And give a wipe on the back. So there we go. So it's very white, but it will dry a little bit less opaque. And I'm not going to leave it white, by the way. I'm going to give it a good blow dry. It takes a while to dry that, so you could either blow dry it and also walk away for a few hours and let it get bone dry. And I decided I'm going to play with, since I've got white on the top right, I'm going to use this print that I found because I want a hit of white on the left. But same thing as the molding paste and this tissue. I'm putting white down, but I'm going to glaze both of them so they're not going to stay white. They, they look okay staying white, but I want to show you what you, you know what you can do to take it further. Yeah, I folded the bottom edge and I'm cutting it while it's still folded so that I get a nice clean straight line, line along the bottom. I can do that with the scissors because it will just be along the bottom. And I don't want to have tissue paper glued right over top that center seam, so I'm separating the last fence post, if you will. That's what it reminds me of, fence. I'm going to separate them so that I don't have any glued right over top of the fold. Again, using my matte medium to glue it down. And I've got to put those protectors back behind the page. Then I don't have to worry about matte medium getting stuck on the pages, uh, the edges of the page. So I'm going to glue this one down on the right side. When you press that down with your finger, use the soft part of your finger, not your fingernails. Let's get this other one glued down and follow the bottom edge of the page. You can see already we're losing some of the white of the tissue paper by gluing it down. It's not completely disappeared, but I'll show you what to do about that. So there is balance now between the bottom left of the spread and the top right with the tissue print and with the mold molding paste. But you could see how that dried semi-transparent, um, but I'm also going to do some glazing over it. I don't want it to be an overall white print uh, pattern of the sunburst. I want it to start off with color and then morph into different colors throughout the pattern. So I'm just dabbing, dabbing this semi-opaque blue. And I'm not, it's not disappearing complete because remember there's, it's molding paste. So there's relief there. So it'll be very obvious once this all dries and is finished, it'll be very obvious. But it's fun that it's there, it's continuing the printed rounded pattern, and yet it's morphing into colors. I really have fun with this. This is my favorite part of my process, is at this point where you've got everything kind of down in place, and then you just kind of decide what you want to bring out, bring forward, put into the back. Uh, this is the fun. This is the mindfulness that I, I get lost in it. So I'm going to bring out and use my finger. I'm going, to, I'm going to glaze the bottom part of this. And it was a little too green, so I'm going to remove some of that with water and dab it back. I didn't want so much green on there. As soon as you add yellow over top of blue, you get the green. So I just didn't, didn't want that much. So I like how there's blue on the top right, and then it turns into a little bit of that sunburst being white. And then at the very bottom there, I bring out the orange, the, the, the Nicolazzo gold. That's really fun. I'm doing the same thing down with the picket fence and smudging that a little. Just love how that just is just dynamic. It's got movement and energy now. I think that's a lot of fun. 
lot of fun. And let's do the same thing now with the picket fence. I'm going to add um, stronger color right from the bottle on the right and then start picking up that color in between each fence post so that I'm, re I'm, I'm just bringing the white parts of the fence forward and shooting back this terracotta color into the background. And because I don't want it the same from left to right, I'm just covering up some of the picket fence now with brighter yellow. That far right one on the right page, that one post, it's very red, and these are turning into uh, from red to yellow. I like that. I like how fun that is. Again, that's allowing movement and energy throughout the spread. That's so fun. I really, really like this. And as I dab a little bit away, see that it's redder on the right, and then it starts to go to more yellow. That's fun. And as I dab some of that away, it reveals a little bit of the white. And I think that's fun because there's a little bit of white in the middle of the sunburst, so they balance. Really had fun with this one. I forgot to sign it, but I'm calling this done. I'm, I'm happy with how it looks. I'm finished with the coloring. I've taken away the tape behind and it's bone dry now, even though it looks shiny. It's not wet, it's dry. And all I have to do now is cut away any excess tissue paper that was overlapping the edges of the page, just to clean things up. Look at that, so fun. So, so fun, and you can only get this by doing all the layers and having patience. You could cut out or stamp on some dragonflies, get a Posca pen and whiten up a bit. If you really like things to be really obvious, that'd be really fun, and it would certainly work with this spread. But me being an abstract artist, I don't like it that obvious. I prefer to leave it just like it is. This gives me a lot of joy. I hope you liked it. And join me for the next one. And have fun practicing, everybody. You'll get better and better. Uh, just love this. See you next time.